and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe how Group 1 metals react with oxygen, chlorine and water. You should then be able to describe how the reactivity of the Group 1 metals changes as we move down the group. And finally, you should be able to explain the change in reactivity in terms of the outer electron. This is a big topic, so I'm going to split this into two videos. In this video, we look at how group 1 metals react with oxygen and with chlorine. In the next video, we look at how group 1 metals react with water and see how we can explain the change in reactivity moving down the group. I'm showing you group 1 here. Group 1 is called the alkaline metals and you could be asked that in your exam. All group 1 metals have got one electron in the outer energy level, and again you need to learn that. We're going to start now by looking at how group 1 metals react with oxygen. I'm showing you here the element lithium, and I'm cutting this with a scalpel. One thing you'll notice is that group 1 metals are soft. Now, as soon as I expose some fresh lithium, we can see that it reacts rapidly. The lithium is reacting with oxygen in the air, forming lithium oxide. We can see the equivalent reaction taking place with sodium in this video. Again, the sodium is reacting with oxygen in the air, forming sodium oxide. You'll notice that sodium reacts more rapidly than lithium. This video shows potassium reacting with oxygen in the air, forming potassium oxide. Potassium reacts even more rapidly than sodium or lithium. So as we've seen, all group 1 metals react rapidly with oxygen. Group 1 metals react more rapidly as we move down group 1. I'm showing you here an atom of lithium and an atom of oxygen. As you can see, lithium atoms have got one outer electron, and oxygen atoms have got six outer electrons. When lithium reacts with oxygen, the outer electron from the lithium atom moves to the oxygen atom like this. As you can see, the lithium atom now has a full outer energy level. However, the oxygen atom does not. It still requires one more electron. So another lithium atom transfers its outer energy electron to oxygen like this. Now both lithium atoms and the oxygen atom have a full outer energy level. Now at the end of this reaction, each lithium atom has got three positive protons in their nucleus, but only two negative electrons. So these are now positive one ions. The oxygen atom has got eight positive protons in its nucleus, but it now has ten negative electrons, so it's now a negative two ion. We can write the equation for the reaction between lithium and oxygen like this. Remember that oxygen molecules contain two oxygen atoms. This means that we have to balance the equation by inserting large numbers, and here they are. We can write equivalent equations for other group 1 metals simply by changing the symbol for the element. So here are the equations for sodium and potassium as well. The key fact is that because all of the group 1 metals have got one outer electron, they all react with oxygen in the same way. So as we've seen, group 1 metals react very rapidly with oxygen. They also react rapidly with other gases, and one of these is chlorine, which is in group 7. So let's look at that reaction now. This shows a lithium atom and an atom of chlorine. When these react, the outer electron from the lithium atom moves on to the chlorine atom like this. This produces the one positive lithium ion and the one negative chloride ion. Both of these ions now have a full outer energy level, and we've made the compound lithium chloride. We can write the equation for the reaction between lithium and chlorine like this. Remember that chlorine molecules contain two chlorine atoms, so we do need to balance the equation, and I'm showing you that here. Just like before, we can write equivalent equations for sodium and potassium, and here they are. You'll find plenty of questions on the Group 1 alkali metals in my revision workbook, which you can get by clicking on the link above. OK, so hopefully now you can describe how Group 1 metals react with oxygen and chlorine, and then describe how the reactivity of the Group 1 metals changes as we move down the group.